Well, well, well. You know, extra time means extra preparation. If you get extra time, two weeks to prepare for a test, you better nail it. If you have two weeks to prepare for a party, it better be good. If you have two weeks to prepare for your wife's anniversary, uh, you got to do better than a card. Okay, my wife's already preparing for Thanksgiving dinner a couple weeks out. Okay, so she's prepared. Extra time generally ensures more detail, better job. If what I watched last night was the Dallas Cowboys off a bye, they had two weeks to prepare, and that's what they gave me. That was like showing and inviting all your relatives over for Thanksgiving that you prepared two weeks for and saying, walking out saying, hey, what do, we, what do you guys want to do for dinner? Well, anybody got any ideas on dinner? Jason Garrett, that was awful. No juice. Two weeks to prepare. 18 first downs off a bye. Under 300 yards total offense on a bye. 72 yards rushing on a bye. 25, uh, 25 minutes time of possession on a bye. That was, that's the kind of game you get fired over. By the way, Andy Reid off a bye is 19 and 5. Bill Belichick off a bye is 30 and 13. Mike McCarthy off a bye is 12 and 5. Sean Payton, Mike Tomlin, Urban Meyer in college is 24 and 1 off a bye. Jason Garrett sub 500. What does that tell you? That extra time doesn't help this staff and doesn't help Jason Garrett. I don't know what else you got to see. But if you have two weeks to prepare for a test or a date or a party or Thanksgiving or an anniversary, you can't mail it in with that. And what's really troubling for Dallas, they were terrible in the red zone. Well, what is the red zone? It play calling, situational, execution. For the record, the Tennessee Titans were playing off a bye. Did you notice how great they were on third down? They were excellent. That's the best Marcus Mariota has ever been in a third down. Did you notice how good the Titans were in the red zone? Four to five trips a touchdown. The only issues the Titans had last night are fumbles, and that has nothing to do with coaching. I mean, that was embarrassing. The Titans' offensive coordinator was the Rams' OC a year ago. Uh, um, Matt LaFleur. He had two weeks to prepare. You see what you got there in Tennessee? Marcus Mariota, that's as good as he's ever been situationally. And Jason Garrett and Dak, and here's the amazing thing about Jason Garrett. It's not like he was a popular player. It's not like he has a big personality. It's not like he's a legend. I get firing Tom Landry was hard. I get if Troy Aikman was the coach of the Cowboys, that would be a hard guy to fire. That would reverberate through the Dallas Metroplex, right? I get that. Jason Garrett's not a big personality. His resume is nine years 500 coach, the only exception when he leads the league in rushing. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> I mean, that you don't get that very often. I mean, there are statement wins and there are statement losses. At home, off a bye, against a struggling offense, and you made that offense, if it wasn't for fumbles, I don't even think I'm, I, I'm not even embellishing. If it's not for fumbles, that game could have been 28-0. I mean, w what else does Jerry Jones need to see? That was brutal. I mean, that, we got nine years of a 500 coach. And I'm telling you, when you look at the best coaches in football off a bye, they all win generally twice as much as they lose. Tomlin, Peyton, Belichick, McCarthy, Gruden even, Reed, Harbaugh. Look at their winning percentages off a bye, 650, 750. John Harbaugh, 10-2. and two. Urban Meyer, 24-1. and one. Nick Saban's record. What was that? That was atrocious. 14 days to prepare, and, you, and Dallas was situationally embarrassing. I'm not a guy that calls for people's jobs, but if that doesn't get him run, I don't know what does. Not good enough. I mean, just not good enough. And juxtaposed with the Titans, who also have a young quarterback who's kind of struggling and they have some wide receiver issues, too, like Dallas. It was kind of like watching two teams going through the same stuff. The difference is, I mean, even both teams had a bye. The difference is one of them was tremendous situationally last night off a bye. One was pathetic. All right, let me shift to this. 
Patriots play Tennessee next. So the Patriots were watching Tennessee last night. Belichick was watching, but more importantly, Tom Brady said it after the game against Green Bay. I'll be watching Monday Night Football. We play Tennessee next. Well, 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 well. I hope Tom Brady was watching that game because did anybody notice who really struggled for Tennessee? Malcolm Butler is an utter disaster. He's a cornerback that Bill Belichick let go. And all the Patriot players, including Tom Brady, banged on Belichick. He doesn't know what he's doing. Bill lost us the Super Bowl. No, Bill didn't lose the Super Bowl. Somebody hit Tom Brady's arm. He fumbled. That lost the Super Bowl. By the way, Belichick did not lose the Super Bowl. New England never punted. Tom Brady's last three drives in that Super Bowl, touchdown, 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 all 75 yards. And then he finally got the ball one more time, and he was driving for the winning touchdown, and Philly couldn't stop him, and their defensive players was gassed, and it was going to look like every Super Bowl Tom Brady's been in. One possession, here comes Tom, beat Seattle, beat Atlanta, beat, and he fumbled. It was not about Malcolm Butler, who Belichick decided to sit. And there was a reason Belichick decided to sit Malcolm Butler, because when Belichick bails on a relationship, he's the world's best bailer. He's right, always. I mean, he's Chandler Jones has been pretty good in Arizona, but Chandler Jones had stuff off the field and was getting super expensive and hasn't won any games for Arizona if you've watched him play. Belichick was right on Nate Solder. He was right on Deion Lewis. He was right on Danny Amendola, and he's right on Malcolm Butler. By the way, the data was in, but everybody got too emotional because Belichick's the most powerful coach in the most powerful sport, and he mocks the media, and everybody was waiting for an opportunity to seize on him. We don't like all that power Bill's got, and so they lose the Super Bowl. Malcolm Butler, that's the reason you're a bum. You're no good. You don't know what you're doing. Malcolm Butler was benched in the Super Bowl because in the previous two playoff games, he was targeted 11 times, eight completions, two touchdowns, and the passer rating 146 from Blake Bortles and Marcus Mariota. He needed to be benched. And by the way, the guy that t- caught the touchdowns against Butler didn't have a touchdown catch all year before Malcolm Butler, in which he had two. Listen, Belichick was right on Nate Solder. He was right on Amandola. He was right on Corey Dillon. He was right on every guy he's bailed on. Malcolm Butler can't play anymore. He can't play. I think he's rated like the 132nd, according to Pro Football Focus, like the 132nd corner in the league right now. And they paid him $30 million. So when Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, and all you Patriot players, Bill doesn't know what he's doing. Bill cost us the Super Bowl. Bill Belichick's a dummy. Bill Belichick's the reason we lost him. When Belichick walks into Patriot place today, I hope he walks in like Conor McGregor in an octagon. Get a load of me. Look at me. Who's feeling good about themselves today? Bill Belichick should do the Conor McGregor octagon walk. Because all you Patriot players, he lost us the Super Bowl. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's no good. He's right again. Malcolm Butler is a shot corner. And New England appears to be, once again, the best team in the AFC, if not all of football. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.